So we are here with Mark Iaconelli after a really engaging conversation that we had with him and a presentation we had from him last week. Mark, thank you so much. I have a question for you. You spoke eloquently to our group about how to actually listen to people, both to young folks and older folks. What do you think is key to good listening and why does that matter so much for youth ministry in particular? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the great thing about listening is we have most days we have to practice it, <laughs> you know, whether it's with our family members or friends or colleagues, you know, there, there's many opportunities a day to practice it and to observe ourselves doing it well or doing it poorly. And, and we've all, my guess is all of us have had moments we've done, we've done really beautiful, um, connected, open, generous, compassionate listening. We've all had moments like that. And we've had moments where we have been jerks, you know, where, we, where we're not present, not connected, um, maybe even do harm, you know, because someone's trying to communicate something important to them and we're just not there. And so we just leave that person feeling more alienated, more lonely. So, so we know those moments. The key to good listening, at least in my experience, is I would say to try to get into a space where you are grounded or connected or centered or whatever language works for you, present, available, um, where there's room in you, where, where the fruits of the spirit are more likely to show up, you know, patience, kindness. Um, so often that means like if before I interact with young people, I mean, if I'm, if I'm intentionally going, I'm going to meet with some young person, I'm going to be on Zoom with some young people or whatever, is to take a moment to pause. I mean, maybe this is 30 seconds, 10 seconds, just go, okay, you know, I just got out of this meeting with my wife about how our mortgage has to be refinanced, you know, and, um, you know, I'm trying to figure out who's going to give a ride to my daughter this afternoon, and, but I want to be present to this person. So <sighs> deep breath, remember who I want to be. I want to be here. And uh, so that's, that's, I think, the most important thing that, that if you see yourself as um, a conduit of, of God's loving presence or God's compassionate presence, how do I get connected to that? What do I need to do? And we all might need different things. It might be I need to take a walk or I need to take a deep breath or um, I need to remember sort of the heart of this person I'm going to listen to. But it does a lot when the, when the parent in a family or when the adult in a ministry situation is grounded, the whole room shifts. When they're not grounded, we all remember that as kids, right? You go into a room and there's anxiety or there's parents or there's some bad feeling in the room or they're not really there uh, and the listening doesn't really take place. So, so one I would say is, is the person and getting grounded. Yeah, and I can imagine that that matters so much for youth ministry because I tend to think youth are pretty darn intuitive. They can they can smell out when we are faking it. Um, and I think really are very, very many of them very sensitive to reading the room and reading the energy that you were just talking about. Um, and that's a really subtle point you're making there that, that um, in ministry, we can learn to put on a professional listening face like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, that's great. But we're not really listening. We're, yep. we're impersonating someone who's listening. <laughs> yep. but, but we're actually not there. And you're right. Youth sniff that out immediately versus, uh, you know, there, there's kind of a spaciousness. I, I feel inside myself a kind of I'm relaxed, you know, in the presence of a young person where it's like, hey, how are you doing? And I mean it. I can tell you the most important thing that's happened for my daughter is a senior in high school. And she brings this up continually. This is one of the most powerful things that's happened to her in high school is her English teacher. Every single class goes to each young person just privately and says, how are you doing today? And Grace says, "There's it's not unusual that there's tears or somebody just spilling their gut. And he does it. And then he goes to the next student. And she said, he is so, he means it when he asks it. And she said, I sometimes just can't wait till like I get that class tomorrow for that question that he's going to ask me. And I said, what is it? And she said, well, he just means it. 
And so trying to get in that space where we mean it, like, hey, how are you doing? And we're really present and we're available and we want to hear. And so the question for you, for ministers is like, I know what it's like not to be in that space. What helps me to get into that space? And it may mean if I'm rushing from home where it's the chaos of getting dinner on the table and, you know, an argument I'm in with my wife, what do I need? You know, it's better I sit in the car for five more minutes and show up late and be present than rush in and I made it on time, but I'm not really here. 